Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Nitrogen, the random world generator for seven days to die, as well as the compo pack. That allows you to add a lot of extra places of interest that players have created. It's definitely worth it. It makes the game much more interesting. It is a little confusing though. It didn't take me too long to figure it out though. To save you the hassle of figuring it out, I'll show you how to do it. Now the link to where you download Nitrogen and the combo pack is in the description, though I'll show you how you can find it anyway. Probably the quickest way to find it is to type in seven days to die, Nitrogen. It should be at the top of the search results. Now if you scroll down, you want to download this one and this one, and it downloads. Then we go to the combo pack, and you can download it here. Uh, once you sign in, you just go, no thanks, continue. And then you can click here, I think, direct download. It is a fairly large file, 136 megabytes. You'll probably need WinRAR as well. Now, just to show you, I downloaded this about a week ago. And as you can already see, it's been updated. Make sure you stay on top of it if you want to make a new map. So first, do the compo pack. Extract that. Might take a while because there's a lot of files in it. Open that up. Now, it's actually got the install instructions here. Once you've extracted it, you need to find your folder where you've installed seven days to die, which will be in your Steam folder. Now, if anyone knows this, this is completely off topic, but I can't delete this. It just can't find it. It's just one of my old projects. There's nothing in it. But anyway, off topic. So go to program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, and then seven days to die. Go to data and then prefabs. Now I've already got a lot of the old ones in here. That's fine. So you want to grab all these files in here. Please copy all files from folder into your prefabs folder. Best way is control A, control C or control X. Control C or copy and paste. And then we move it in here. Uh... And because I've got some of the old files in there, replace all the files of the destination. Where this folder is depending on what hard drive you installed it on. I like to install the games that are harder to run on my SSD drive, which is my C drive. Once that's all in there, go back and go to config and you want the config from the file before and this file here you need to copy and paste it in here and you want to replace it and that's done so you've got the compo pack that's all done next you want to do nitrogen so extract that open it up and here it is here yes my first name is Tyson I thought about blocking it out, but I've got it everywhere on my computer. It makes these tutorials too hard. So yes, I've got a black man's name, according to Frederick. So this is it. What you need to do is just go up to prefab list and go compo pack 42. And that's it. Then you can edit the map however you want it to be. So I'll just make a water world just for funsies. Now there's only a few settings I'd recommend that you probably stay away from. And that's the city size. Don't go mega. I've made a patron server and I've got it at very large and the city's a brick and massive and it does slow down the game. And if you're hosting a server, a lot of them won't be able to run it too well. I went through one recently. I just used the cheapest option and wasn't able to run a 16K map. It kept shutting down because it kept exceeding the RAM usage. And a few other things like if you go very smooth and very flat, it will the map will look more fake than it should. It's going to be a lot easier to build. And also you always put traders at lots because that's just fun. No one wants to drive far for that. So I'm just going to do an 8K map, render 8K maps on my PC take about two minutes, a 16K takes 15 minutes, and make sure you change the name each time. Now for me, I've got it running on my old gaming laptop for my patron server. I created the map on here and then transferred it over. You can transfer it through the network, it's probably the best way. So the other way I did it, I just used mega.co.nz and uploaded it there and downloaded it off that. So if you can't transfer it to your other PC, just use a cloud service of some kind. This is about... I would say 80 to 100 times faster than using the random map generator inside the game. Because the game's got to run Unity Engine at the same time as trying to generate the map. It takes a long time. Plus the map generator inside the game is pretty crap. Also, every time you generate a map, you have to change the name. Otherwise, it will just automatically override the other one. Now, I'm relatively quite new to this. So a lot of these things I'm not too familiar with. I don't know what custom towns are. Extra car lots, that would be good if you like scrapping cars. If you're going with no wasteland, which I often do, if you go natural, there's no burn or wasteland, you'll want to 
add more car lots because there will be a lot less cars then. Also, farms, if you're used to Navas Gang, I would go very few if you want to keep it pretty balanced. If you've got lots, it's just going to be farms everywhere. Now, that took 2 minutes and 35 seconds. And then it goes to your output folder. Go to preview map, and that's it. That's a pretty stock standard map. I don't like the desert in the middle. That's All the cities are in the desert just about for that one. Yeah, don't go mega city though. Here's a one that I made, a 16k map. That is, uh, got a lot of water in it, but the cities aren't very big in that one. And the one that I first showed at the start of the video, I'm using on my Patreon server. This is it here. Once that's done, uh, you probably should rename it if you left it as that, so I'll call it Tits McGee Lived in a Tree. Oh, that circle thing, I've got one drive and it's trying to sync it up. Once that's done, you need to go to your seven days to die folder again, go to data and go to worlds and you just whack it in there. And then you open up seven days to D and you go new game or whatever. Scroll through. And then we go tits McGee lived in a tree. I'll quickly list off what the dots mean. The baby shit color ones, they're houses. The gray ones are meant to mean mountain houses. Brown means alone, as in it's separated completely from everything else. These big ones here, they're usually amusement parks. If you're using the compo pack, just let you know inside the minion, there's a secret trader. I hope I didn't spoil that for you, but I definitely recommend you check them out because they've actually got a lot of stuff. The stuff doesn't seem to be better, they just got a lot more. The green ones, the bright green ones mean farms. The light blue means city center, so I'm guessing there'll be a lot of business buildings there. The blue ones mean industrial. The pink ones, those are the ones you want to look out for. Those are the traders. If you generate enough maps, eventually you'll get something like this where two traders are right next to each other and you can build it in the middle. And this blue type color, those are, it's like a greeny blue, indigo maybe. That's a car lot. Also vicious cracks are these things here. Just letting you know that when I was driving down here, I decided to take the mountains. See these vicious cracks here? These were on the top of a mountain, so they went really far down and I drove my car into it. And it was not fun to get it out. I don't know if you want to go vicious cracks or not. They can give you a bit of a shock if they're inside a lake. I think they go a lot deeper than like the Mariana Trench. I drove into one and I had to pick up my car because it was that deep. And that's how you do it. If you're doing a dedicated server, you might have to use an external program to upload it to your server because of the size of it. Like, I had to use FileZilla for my one. It's not too difficult to learn, but that's just out of the scope of this video. Just to give you an example, that's 194 megabytes for that Tits McGee lived in a tree. And a 12K map, that came in at 388 megabytes. You can go 16K. I think 12K is big enough. It's freaking huge. Yeah, so that's it. If you need any help, let me know in the comments. I'm not as familiar with 7 Days to Die as I am with the forest, so I might not be able to help. Anyway, if you like this video, Make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.